hear it before you see it. A low, steady roar in the distance, like a freight train, barreling straight toward you. You step outside. The air is thick, greenish, charged. Birds are gone. The trees have stilled. Time seems to pause. And then, chaos, wind, debris, and screams. And in just moments, your whole world changes. Tonight, on The Midnight Files, When Nature Strikes, we take you back to May 3rd, 1999, to a calm spring afternoon in Moore, Oklahoma, that exploded into one of the most violent tornado events in human history. Winds over 300 miles per hour, a tale of unstoppable natural force, devastating loss, and unwavering human resilience. Before the headlines, before the sirens, before the destruction, there was just Moore, Oklahoma. Located in central Oklahoma, Moore sits like a quiet thread between two major centers, Norman to the south and Oklahoma City to the north. It's a community with deep roots, known for its friendliness, modest living, and a strong sense of pride. In 1999, Moore was home to just over 40,000 residents, working class families, young couples starting out, and retirees who had spent decades under the wide open Oklahoma sky. Many commuted to jobs at nearby Tinker Air Force Base or into the metro areas. Others worked in local schools, grocery stores, construction, or small businesses. Everyone knew someone, and most had weathered their fair share of spring storms. And in Moore, weather is just a normal part of life. The climate brings all four seasons, but spring? Spring is different. It's beautiful, but it's terrifying. Each year from March to June, Oklahomans brace for tornado season. They're used to it. They know the drills. Families own weather radios. Schools conduct tornado drills. Homes have shelters or safe rooms. The culture here teaches preparedness. But even so, nothing could prepare them for the storm that was coming. The atmosphere on May 3rd, 1999 was volatile. The day begun, warm and humid, sticky, thick, and unsettled. By mid-morning, meteorologists were watching the skies closely. A deep low pressure system was moving through the southern plains, colliding with warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico. Aloft, powerful jet stream winds were swirling, creating intense vertical wind shear, an ingredient critical for tornado formation. The Storm Prediction Center in Norman, just minutes from Moore, issued a high-risk alert, the most serious of its kind. Meteorologists were deeply concerned. All signs pointed to the development of supercell thunderstorms, the most dangerous and long-lived of all storm types. At 4.51 p.m., just southwest of the small town of Chickasha, a tornado touched down. At first it was narrow, a rope of rotating wind snaking from the clouds. But as it moved northeast, it grew, and it grew, and it grew. This tornado would become one of the most destructive storms ever recorded. By the time it sets its sights on Moore, the tornado was over a mile wide, with a visible vortex that looked more like a churning wall of blackened steel than a wind funnel. And the winds inside it? They weren't just fast, they were record-breaking. It's 6.23 p.m. The tornado enters the outskirts of Moore, its path directly through the heart of residential neighborhoods. Local television stations were broadcasting live radar warning residents in stark terms. This is not a drill. Get to shelter immediately. If you are not underground, you may not survive. The tornado was upgraded to F5 on the Fujita scale, the highest possible rating signifying catastrophic damage. Doppler radar would later estimate winds reaching 301 miles per hour, the fastest wind speeds ever recorded on Earth. In Moore, panic met preparation. 
Families raced to underground shelters. Some crawled into bathtubs, covered their children with mattresses. Others had nowhere to go. Then the storm hit. Witnesses described it as hell on earth. The roar was deafening, not like a train, but like 10 trains. The sky turned black, debris rained down like shrapnel. Homes were lifted off of their foundations and shredded mid-air. Steel-framed buildings crumpled like paper. A 36-ton freight car was hurled the length of a football field. Even asphalt was stripped from the roads, something that almost never happens. The destruction wasn't selective. It was total. Entire subdivisions, gone. The tornado stayed on the ground for 38 minutes. It cut a path over 38 miles, reaching widths of nearly a mile. By the time it lifted near Dell City, the landscape it left behind was unrecognizable. More than 8,000 homes were damaged or destroyed. Roughly 1,000 people were injured, and 36 lives were lost, including children, elderly residents, and even a few who had taken shelter, but were overwhelmed by the sheer force of the storm. One heartbreaking story came from Maywood Elementary, where terrified teachers shielded students with their own bodies. Miraculously, most survived, but the trauma would linger for years. Entire families were displaced. Neighborhoods were flattened beyond recognition. Pets were lost. Schools destroyed. Hospitals were filled to capacity. Emergency crews arrived quickly, but in many cases, there was nowhere to go. The streets were impassable. Power lines knocked down. Fires sparked from gas leaks. Night fell on a city in crisis. In the days that followed, Moore became a national story. Not just because of the storm, but because of its strength of its people. Search and rescue teams worked through the night. Volunteers from nearby towns poured in. Churches became shelters. Strangers offered clothing, food, and rides to the displaced. Federal and state disaster declarations opened the floodgates for aid. FEMA arrived, the Red Cross, and the National Guard. But it was the locals, the moms, the firemen, the teachers, the neighbors, who led the charge. Children raised money for classmates who had lost everything. People rebuilt their homes with stronger materials, additional underground shelters, and Moore's city leadership began working on one of the most advanced emergency alert and preparedness systems in the region. The phrase Moore Strong wasn't just a slogan. It was a promise, a vow, to not just survive, but to come back stronger. The 1999 Moore tornado left scars that were never fully healed, but it also sparked an important change. The storm pushed advancements in tornado science and warning technology. Doppler radar was enhanced. Emergency messaging became more direct and urgent. Building codes were reevaluated, especially for schools and public buildings. It also left behind a cultural shift, an awareness, a respect for nature that was deep and sober. Yet, Moore's story didn't end there. In 2013, another F5 tornado struck the city, killing 24 people. But even then, the systems put in place after 1999 saved countless lives. Moore became not just a symbol of devastation, but a blueprint for recovery. May 3rd, 1999, the day Moore, Oklahoma was tested by the most powerful winds ever recorded. The day steel twisted like paper, but hearts stood firm. It was a day of horror, but also of heroes. A story of loss and of love. And that's why we tell these stories. Because in the darkest moments, the light of humanity always shines brighter. Thanks for joining me tonight on this episode of The Midnight Files, When Nature Strikes. Be sure to explore our episodes on the Joplin Tornado, Hurricane Katrina, and the 1925 Tri-State Tornado for more true stories from the edge of nature's wrath. Until next time, I'm Brian. Stay alert, stay strong, and never underestimate 
the sky above. Good night. <laughs>